Okay, now it's time to create our own classes. I'm gonna create a person class. How do I do that? Well, it's very simple. In the JShell prompt, just type the class keyword, and then the name of the class, open curly brace. When you open the curly brace, JShell automatically detects a continuation line like we've already seen. And uh, I'm gonna create a public variable for now, public string name, and then close the curly brace. And now we have created the class person creating classes works like this in JShell. How does it translate to a class model that we've seen? When you create a member variable, it becomes a static member variable of the REPL class. Similarly, when you create a class in JShell, it becomes a static inner class in the REPL class. So this is equivalent to having a person inner class in the REPL class. That's how JShell maps it, and that's how this works. So now I can create a new instance of the person class person p equals new person. I call a constructor and notice what gets echoed back. The variable p contains an instance of the person, but what you're seeing here is a two string representation of that person class. So this is the typical, the name of the class at and the hash code. This is standard Java. So p is now pointing to an instance of person. I can say p dot and then press tab and I get all the options that I can follow the dot with. It includes the uh, methods on the object class, and then I have the name, which is the public property in this class. So I can type name foo. And now I have a couple of things happen. One is the name is assigned the value that I've passed in, and then it also creates a scratch variable $3, which contains that same value. So I can echo p dot name, and I get foo back, which of course incidentally gets assigned to dollar four. And I call I can also echo dollar three, which is the same string value. Now just like you can change methods, you can rewrite the methods and it gets reapplied, you can change a class. Now you can reapply a new class definition. So for instance, if I were to say class person and then I say string first name and then string last name. So I'm basically changing the structure of the class. Will this work? What do you think? If this were to work, what's gonna happen to the existing instance, which we already created, which is P? That would be a problem, right? So the JShell platform developers have an intelligent solution for this. They allow you to redefine classes, right? Redeclare classes with a different structure. But if you were to redeclare a class, they it'll apply the new declaration of the class, but then any instances of the class that you already have will automatically get set to null. You see, it replaced the class definition for person, but then it updated the replaced variable p and reset to null. They have to, right? So for instance, if you have a class declaration, has a particular structure, you have a bunch of instances with that structure. Now, if you go and change the class structure, what's gonna happen to the existing instances? They have to clear it. You don't have this problem in a compile time scenario because there's only one definition of a class, but then in JShell, you can have multiple instances of a class and then redefine the class. So those old instances of the class will have to go. And so JShell is smart about it. It resets those instances to null. Now, another thing you might have noticed is that I don't have any access modifiers to the class. I don't have a private or a public. Again, just like with variable declarations, you don't really you need to use it. It doesn't make sense in the context of JShell because in the, in the sense JShell, everything is in the top level. So if I were to do like a private, class foo, it creates the class, but then it doesn't make sense. Private really doesn't have any meaning because everything you do here is in the top levels. So a private class foo is just as accessible as a public class person or just a class person. The modifier that does make a difference though is abstract. So let's say I have abstract class foo, and then it replaces the definition. And now I cannot create new foo because it is abstract. So the abstract modifier does make sense and you can technically use it if you want. So this is how you work with classes in JShell.